All right, hello everybody. Today, I'm gonna try and teach you how to convert DSLR scans in Lightroom. And just a quick summary of what we're gonna do. First, I'm gonna go through my workflow, just explaining how I go from shooting to a final a finished product. And then I'll briefly tell you how I scan, which I made a video for uh, a couple weeks ago. I'll link it below. Uh, then I'll explain how I convert and I'll take you through my process. And then we'll make some brief edits to the photos during that process and then we'll export and organize them. And I'll just show you how I do those in case anybody wants a reference point. Uh, I felt like those were some important things that would have helped me once I started uh, shooting film and converting negative to positive and starting to really shoot a lot of film. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. My general workflow is to shoot, develop it, let it dry. Once it's ready to be scanned, I'll scan it with a digital camera and a macro lens and a light pad. And then I'll take those files, put them onto my hard drive on my computer. And then I'll use Lightroom and Negative Lab Pro to convert those negatives into positives. And then once they're converted, I'll go through each image and do a minor adjustment to uh, fix any problems that occurred in the conversion process or even in scanning or just to get the photos to look how I want them to look a little more. After I do my minor adjustments, I will export them. I'll put each roll in a separate folder to keep them organized like that. And then I will upload them to a online cloud storage space. The one I use is Amazon Photos because I already pay for Prime, so it comes free with that. Not that we need to be here uh, promoting Amazon. But anywho, so what we're going to start out with are our negatives and a new catalog in Lightroom. So we'll open up a new catalog. I like to date and name my catalogs just to keep them organized. So 2106, just year and month, and uh, how to convert DSLR scans tutorial. Okay, so we have our new catalog in Lightroom. Then I'm gonna bring in scans uh, that I made from um, a couple weeks ago when I scanned a bunch of film with my Sony a6300. If you want to know or learn how I scan with a DSLR scanner, I have a video for that. Uh, it's pretty simple, low budget uh, sort of technique. But now that we have our catalog, we can go and get some scans. And so I know where I left off in my previous scans based on the number skip. And I usually will just go to like the next hundred. Okay, so we select all those and you just drag them into Lightroom. Here are images. I just checked to where uh, my last, my next roll ended. And actually, I think I want to do this next roll because it was from when I was in Wyoming. I mean, in New Orleans. And I think that'll be quite exciting. Okay, so import your files. So you have your scans in Lightroom. Then what I will do is I will move them to their own folder, the raw images. And if I didn't mention before, uh, you scan in raw, not JPEGs, so that you can get maximum quality out of your scans and exporting them as JPEGs so you can view them on cell phones, laptops, etc. I select all the images in this one roll, this roll named 2105 New Orleans First Roll Roundhouse FE 500T or 50D. I'll put the date, some distinct uh, details about the roll so I remember what it is, the camera, which is my Nikon FE, and then I'll put the film type. So this was either 500T or 50D. I wasn't sure uh, because I needed to look up the code later. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select all the f all the images in that role, right click, and I'll create a folder inside, and I'll title it, same title as I titled the role. And so I already did it with this one, the video cut out, but I will do it with this role just to show you. And uh, this is just what I do. You could import all your photos and just convert every single one of them at the same time. But I like to break it up into roles so that it's a little more manageable for me because my computer would be sitting there for hours if I was going to try and do hundreds of scans at once. I think this helps keep me organized too. So like I said, select all the photos in your role, right click on the folder that they're in, click create folder inside, and then the title that you have for your So this was 500T and I'm naming it 500T2 because it's the second type of 500T I have tried. So you move those files into that new folder and Lightroom will create that new file inside the folder that they used to be in. Okay, the ones I'm going to go through here are the, this, these ones from New Orleans. So here's where we really start getting into converting the scans. 
converting them is not the most laborious process, but organizing them takes uh, a little bit of time and patience, at least in my experience. First thing you're going to want to do is select all your images. Right. Select all your images and go to auto white balance. All the images will start looking like this. They'll lose their uh, warm color, warm hue into a more neutral negative. Then what you're going to want to do is start to crop. You see the film border? The film border is in there because I wanted it to be I wanted to make sure I would get the whole image in each scan, but we don't want that color to be factored in into the conversion by Negative Lab Pro. Because essentially what Negative Lab Pro does is it analyzes the image for all the colors in it and then it makes a render of the uh, negative into positive that makes sense based on uh, an algorithm that's written by the creator of the program. And so if we don't crop this stuff out, it'll think that we have some completely dark areas in our photo. And we don't want that, right? Long story short, you don't want to have any film border showing at the time of the conversion. For most of the photos, you can move over to develop and open crop and make a nice generous crop, but leaving a pretty solid amount of border. You want to try and get as much of the photos you can, but not risking it going over. And so to speed this process up, I will select all the photos that have the similar cropping and I will sync the settings between them. You click this sync down here. I have everything unselected besides the crop. So when I click synchronize, the crop will apply. And so everything is zoomed in, border cut out, just an image remaining. All these photos need to be converted, but we still have some, some edge images that I want to get converted as well. So for these ones, you're going to want to do a custom crop for them. So I'll open up the crop and I will crop just the part of the image that uh, has no border and no light leaks because this is like the end of the roll. You got that one. The end of the roll is good. So the beginning. These big strips are like light leaks or some problem with the film during bulk loading. I'm going to try to avoid them and get a decent amount of the picture and that'll do. That's enough to get a conversion. So for this one, we'll test it out, see how it looks with the blue stripes. There we go. Okay. So now it's time to select all your images, right? And then go up and go get your native lab pro. You can learn how to install it somewhere else I'm sure and then you simply click convert 47 negatives and it'll do its work it'll take a while but 10 minutes 15 at the most you can come back and see it so we're gonna let that chill out for a while get up go do something take a walk go outside look far away from the screen to give your eyes a rest something like that for the next 10 minutes or so and you can come back and your role will be converted and then we will do our finishing touches of recropping, slight editing, and then organizing. Our images are converted and Negative Lab Pro finished. When it finishes, it pops up with the screen. I don't do anything in here. I just click apply. And once again, this is just the way that I do it. There are many small details that can get changed along the way, but the general process is the same using Lightroom and Negative, Negative Lab Pro and uh, DSLR scans. With that said, I click apply. And then I will go to crop and then I'll click reset the crop. Even though this image didn't have any changes, um, I can click sync and I will remember everything unclicked besides crop and I'll click synchronize. So that just gets all the images back to their original crop so that I have the full frame in each photo and I, I can see everything that happened to unselect. Cause I only want to go one at a time. I'll go over here, click a different one, and we're back. While I was waiting, I went and got a piece of cake, followed my directions to the T. Shout out Jenna for the cake. Okay, so these were just blank, blank shots at the beginning of the roll. I think they come out really cool, so I still scan them and convert them. Obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to. So, the small edits that I'll do, my philosophy, 
is to just make minor adjustments to make the photo usable to me or to make it more like how I remember it looking when I took the photo. This one looking pretty good. Looks like a normal picture of the sky. Maybe it's a little dark. Bring the exposure up a little bit. So it's looking pretty good to me. Over here, this is an artifact of the way I was scanning. I had a piece of glass on top of the film. Um, sometimes with these, if it's a picture I really want to save, I will uh, try and remove it with the spot removal tool. And it just comes out like this because the film is up against the f uh, glass in a strange way. But that takes time. You can do that if you want to. Most people won't be getting this depending on how they scan. So let's go find a pretty picture. That one's pretty nice. How about this one? Ooh, I like that too. Um, let's work on this one. I like this one a lot. Like I said, I don't do anything on the Negative Lab Pro panel, but I do make adjustments in Lightroom's panel. So what you gotta keep in mind is that everything in here is reversed. So if you wanna make it brighter, instead of going up with the exposure, you have to go down with the exposure. The contrast is not affected by being a negative. Here's where it gets slightly confusing. You gotta understand that the highlights are the shadows and the shadows are the highlights and the whites are the blacks and the blacks are the whites. So if you wanted uh, to turn these highlights down, you would go to the shadows and you'd bring it up. It's a little hard to understand at first, but you pick it up pretty quickly if you're doing hundreds of photos. Like after two or three rolls, I got pretty used to it. But when I get to a picture like this, the first thing I'll do is think about the white balance. This looks pretty good to me. I might want it a little warmer. So once again, these are reversed. When you make it more blue, you're actually making it warmer. See, like I'm going down, I'm clicking down here. It's getting warmer. And this is back to what it was. You can always go back to auto to get your clean slate back. Right? But anyways, I'll go through this. And I think I like this white balance, to be honest. Then I'll normally go to the blacks because this is my personal editing style. I like the whites in the picture, which again, you have to use the black tool to get the whites to change. And you have to bring it down to get the whites to go up, right? That's what I'll go to first usually. And then I'll hit the highlights, which again, you have to, hit the sh you have to use the shadow bar. Because I like my pictures pretty bright. I tend to make them dark without noticing. So I try and raise the brightness as much as I can. Also something to keep in mind, you want to have your computer brightness all the way up when you're editing so that you can clearly see the actual brightness of the photo. So I might want to get it a little brighter, no, a little too much, just a hair. And then for this sort of thing, it really comes down to how long you want to play with it, right? I think that looks kind of cool. When I get to something I like, like this, I'll make a snapshot because I like to make multiple versions of photos sometimes because I still like to have the original, but I also like to do a little more experimentation with things, right? That's fun for me and it helps me uh, enjoy what I'm doing. So that's pretty cool with me. I'll make another snapshot of this one. And I'll move along, right? Uh, say like this cloud picture. This one looks a little dark to me, right? I'll make it brighter. And sometimes it's way more sensitive to edits than others. Like a digital photo, you have complete creative uh, freedom here. It's all under your control. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you how you should edit your photos. But like I said earlier, I usually use this just to correct minor flaws, whether it be the stains on the film or things like this, like that probably came during scanning. Or if I really poorly go and I want to save it because it's uh, something interesting, I'll do what I have to do to make it a visible Photo. See how dark it is here in the scaffolding on this boardwalk. I will go to the highlights because I know this is the shadows. I go to the opposite, the highlights, and I'll bring it down because I want to bring the shadows up a little bit so I can see it a little better. Just like digital pictures, if you bring them too far up, they start to look weird. I think overall, I think making the adjustment does improve the photo. I would go through each photo until I reach the end. And once I reach the end, I select all my photos, including the title one, just so they're all together. And I'll right click and I'll click export. 
and then I will choose my folder, which remember we made a fold we made a folder and it was called New Orleans first roll around house. Find that. And I will select this folder and then I'll click put in subfolder positives and then I'll click export. I'm going to wait on this because I haven't edited every photo, but I'll show you what my folder structure looks like. We can click on this folder, which was just a roll that was Cheyenne to Laramie on some 500T. In here are the raw negatives, all these guys. And then I have in my subfolder the positives and all the positives from that roll. So from here, I would drag this folder into Amazon Photos, like I was saying earlier, or whatever cloud-based storage system you want to use if you want to put them online. Of course, that's totally up to you. I like to have them online because it gives me an extra layer of backup and I can access them from my phone. So if I want to send photos to people, if I want to post photos, I have everything online instead of needing to go to my computer to do that sort of thing. That's pretty important to me because if they're all on my computer, I won't use them elsewhere as much as I would if they were on the phone all the time. Okay, so that's how I convert. I'll do two, three rolls a day sometimes if I have a backlog. Uh, I like to space it out because I enjoy seeing the new photos and if I do too many at once it kind of ruins the excitement. It turns it into work and like I enjoy doing this. I'm not trying to make it into work. Next up on my list, I wanted to mention something about large batches. I think this can be useful for editing a lot of photos and converting a lot of negatives. You can import really as many as you want into Lightroom and you can do like tens of rolls at a time. I just like to go one by one so that I consume it a little slower and I can keep it more well organized. <laughs> but yeah guys, that's how I go from DSLR scans and convert them from raw images into uh, JPEG positives. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them below in the comments. Share this video if you have any friends who also shoot film and want to know how to do this. Also, if you want to know anything else about the process, uh, let me know. I'm sure I'll be making many more videos about scooting or shooting scanning uh developing editing uh sharing film etc follow me on the links below i'll be posting some of these pictures for sure yeah thanks again for watching and i'll catch you in the next one